स्टार्ट करते कमरुल स्टार्ट करते गुड इवनिंग रेसपेक्टेड फिजिशियंस आफ्टर लंग ब्रेक वेगेन स्टार्टिंग प्रोग्राम अर्गानाइज बी स्टाडी ग्रुप एंड टूडे इज आवर फिफ्टी सेवेंथ लेक्चर दिस उल given by our respected professor rafiq ahmed sir and as usual before starting up the lecture session i'd request professor abdul wali choudhry sir to say some words regarding our rafiq ahmed sir and the program wadud sir assalamu alaikum good evening to everybody it has been a long break but i think that break was very uh, futile because balash didn't do anything good in in the cricket field well uh, the past is past let's proceed for that uh, today we are going to have a lecture from dr rafiq ahmed sir we all know they we call him our mentor do you know why a mentor is somebody who makes you advance in study in your skill and in your thinking process he can change you the purpose of education is to change if one can achieve that that person should be accepted as a true mentor because he can bring the change dr rafiq is like that i won't say anything more thank you rafiq sir for being with us guiding us let us enjoy dr fixer's lecture good evening everybody well we had a break but uh, probably the cricket was not as exciting i mean it was exciting but uh, not as expected right or as we wanted to be but that's good so we're going to go back uh, after a long break and uh, every time after the break it it takes time to catch up and i hope more and more people will will go back into our regular session and um, more and more people will participate in it so um i mean what i'm going to do uh, my job is uh, there are many good speakers and then i summarize it and do things that to reevaluate how we are doing so we'll start with this um one um we'll please look at it for a few seconds probably 20 seconds and then we will uh, give a poll and i would expect please um all of you should answer or as um, whether right or wrong but please answer with a little bit of thinking process um not just random yeah okay there is a choice let's click one of those uh, that doesn't add to the learning Sir, is it for twenty seconds? Yeah. Okay. Sir.
Okay, well, I think that's good, right? So, um, I mean, uh, my professor of ophthalmology, um, when I was, we were fourth year, we went to eye rotation and he said, first one week, you go along the ward, look at the eye and look at the diagnosis. And he gave us, and after seven days, he started teaching. And he, what he did is it, he taught us how to do visual diagnosis. This is actually a visual diagnosis. If you look at this ECG, except for slow heartbeat, this is a normal ECG. And this is actually, if we, if the, if we increase the rate, that will be 90% of ECG in our clinical practice. Because 90% of ECG that we are going to do are going to be normal. So yes, sinus bradycardia because the rate is slow, otherwise it's a normal ECG. And that should be the final report. But in the process, we will also do the PR interval, QRA duration, QT interval, QRS axis. Um, two to one AV block. Yes, I, I know why uh, whoever answered two to one AV block is a good answer. But the question is, rate is 45. And if you look at lead V2, um, if you look at lead V2, you may something which looks like a P wave but it is not present in other places because if you do a two to one AV block, so I'm going to measure in lead two here, one, two, three, four, five, six big boxes. I should have seen a clear P wave after three boxes and there is none. So it is not two to one AV block, but when, whenever you see a heart rate of 40 to 45, please always keep that in mind. So thank you. What does any comment on that or anything? Sir, actually, oh, you have always told us, see, look at lots and lots of ECG. <clears throat> and make an impression what a normal ECG looks like. And first impression is always comes out to be uh, quite a good impression and most of the time correct. Good. Thank you. Just so go to the next ECG. Sometimes our audience wonders why you bring this is very nearly normal ECGs. Actually, that's the most important thing that you, should, you are trying to develop our uh, habit of looking and having an impression of normal ECG. Exactly. So what happens every time I see an abnormal ECG, in my mind, there should be a comparison. And the comparison is the normal ECG. So that's, that's the basis. So I think it's very, very important uh, to, to remember in the background what a normal ECG looks like. And look at the questions, because the questions, sometimes there are clues about uh, dancers. Do you want to have a poll, sir? Yes, yes, please. Review poll, please. Review poll, please. Review, are you hearing me? Uh, yes, sir. Poll, please. Poll, did you, sir? for 10 seconds because we have have a low, long look at it okay sir is sir internet ek to problem korchilo to start korechi sir you 10 second pore ekhon bondho kore dao 10 second pore hi lekhabe shobai dekheche okay okay okay, okay sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, because, you know, what I have done here, you know, I always like simple things, but here I have made it a little bit tricky because 
all the answers are actually correct answers. And the question is, what is the most, and I think Wadud is the best person to comment on this. <laughs> so I was giving them a clue. Look at the questions, because if you want to talk about a rhythm disturbance, particularly about sinus arrhythmia, you need to have a long rhythm stream. You don't have it here. We don't have it here. So the, all the answers which has the term sinus arrhythmia must be wrong by default. That's one clue. Number two, look at the one, sinus rhythm with sinus arrhythmia day 60 be normal ECG. And when you want to have that, you have to have a group of uh, RI interval a little bit slow, money smaller, and the RI interval a little bit larger. That's not present here like that. There are some, in, look at the lead three. First RI interval, second RI interval, there is a difference. There is very likely to be sinus arrhythmia. That's what Sarah was saying, but you cannot confirm it without seeing a long rhythm stream. Yeah. So, I mean, all the answers, can, but look at it, that initially it looks very regular, but if you look at the last one, it's one, two, three, four, five boxes. The one before it, so there is a subtle variation. If we don't, if you say, Sinus rhythm normally CG, I am fine with it. But what I wanted to point out in this, there is T inversion in lead three. But so the question is between number three and number four, is it abnormal ECG because of the T inverse? Is it normal ECG? But that's a normal accepted variation that you can see one of the limb, especially lead three, you can see, but that doesn't make it an abnormal ECG. And sir, can, so that's what I was trying to point out. Sir, sir can I, I have a point, sir? I have a question, sir. Yes. So question is that uh, one day in late three, uh, in the third R wave, that is a uh, biphasic T wave. But yes. That, uh, gee, but uh, in same lead, in lead two, lead one, there is no much variation in the P wave. The P waves yes. are similar. So whether yes. it's an artifact. Okay. So this is the third. This is the one that you are talking My that's, a, that's where the lead changes. It's a marker the ECG machine puts. But Every before time. That, before that, so P yeah, wave right? on the same, uh, in the t, uh, t, lead two and lead one, uh, P wave are not that, is no variation, similar P wave. Yeah. But yes. why there, there would be a, a different P waves in uh, day three at, the, at this position? This one, right? Right. Sir. Yes. So. The interesting part is that sinus beat, please remember one thing, there can be certain degree of variation in sinus P wave because sinus node is a one inch long structure. Depending on which part it is coming from, you can see a certain degree of variation, but as long as that doesn't change overall, because if the sinus beat is exiting from the top of the sinus node and the bottom of the sinus, so there is a difference of one inch and that's why that's why we can see some degree of variation um, in the P wave. So can I make and a of comment? course, the, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. About the T wave, yes. T inversion can be present normally in AVR, in lead three and V1. If they are isolated, there is no contiguous lead changes. These do not count as path pathological. Yes. So of all these answers. I will take all the first three. So, and in that respect, we're very successful. Number four, the finding is correct, but the comment is wrong. It is not an abnormal ECG, right? We all agree on that, right, Dr. Shafiq? Yes. Yes, yes. so this is not an abnormal ECG. The findings are all correct.
ডেন্সি When we look at a picture, we always like to look at the prominent abnormal finding. And in the process, sometimes we miss minor abnormal findings. Those are also important. So please pay attention to it. But I think I'm very, very happy that all of us are, majority of the participants are answering, not missing the major findings and also answering them. These are, even though this is abnormal ECG, but this is a common, it's a normal abnormal ECG. That's the way I define it. I mean, the right bundle branch is a very common finding. So thank you. So uh, whether we can say right axis deviation that is triphasicular block as well? Yes. Yes, I, I ignored that part but, uh, on parable, but actually it is extreme right axis. So the question would be, should, shall I, should I have added left posterior fascicular block? Yes. yes. Because of the extreme, yes. So um, yes, that, that term can be used because of the uh, really axis deviation. Thank you. The, the thing about multiple choice question is the questions are never made randomly Uh, it is also important for us as a teacher to learn how to create multiple choice questions. That means all the choices should be partially correct. Yes. We cannot randomly put a very, very wrong answer, um, wrong choice. And the answer will be the most correct answer will be the, the, will be the right choice. Deepu Pols, Pols though. Interesting. So it, when the time is over, I think, is the time over? Shall we discuss this? Yes, sir. Okay, what do our uh, Dr. Shafiq Actually, uh, I just want to go with the poll because it is definitely right axis deviation, no doubt about it. And left atrial enlargement at uh, evidenced by um, V1, that is uh, the downstream is more than the upstream. And also, uh, so, and that is uh, definitely um, uh, in V5, V6, V4, there is uh, almost Q web. But just a little R web in the V4 and V5, but V6 is clean, clean cut Q web. And as well as in the inferiors, that is Q web. So more likely it is, uh, and there is also first degree B block as well, the PR interval is prolonged. So I just go with uh, three, that is first degree B block, left atrial and enlargement and all anterolateral inferior microbial infarction, sir. Well, do any comment?
uh, yes. in Discord. Right? And that's the most important thing about if the AVR is that much positive, you have to think about there must be some sort of a singular block. Otherwise, it's impossible to have a, a positive wave like that. And which way has it gone? Has it gone to the left way, leftward extreme division or the rightward extreme division? If it is leftward extreme division, AVL must be positive. If it is the rightward no, extreme we, division, then the AVL will be negative. Yeah, sure. which, which one? What did you say? What the last final comment? Uh, if the when we get this our AVR is that much positive, yes, usually we have a fascicular black acid with that. Otherwise, you do yes. not get extreme deviation like this. Yes. So the question and, is: Is this left anterior fascicular block or posterior uh, fascicular? Sir, that's what I was saying. If it is the left like way extreme deviation, the AVL will be also positive. If it is the uh, right sided extreme deviation, AVL will be negative. So AVL is positive here. Yeah, so it's left and okay. block. So I thought, you know, the, the question is whether there is an inferior MI or not. Yes. To have MI, you have to have a Q wave. If you look at lead three and AVF, it's there not. is a small R wave, tiny. It's small R wave, right, sir. Yes. So that's why, I mean, initially I had the choice in the number four inferior MI, I took that off. And I felt, if you all agree, that is sinus rhythm. There is first degree wave block. I did not put that part here, but left anterior enlargement is there, left anterior right. and full anterolateral MI. And I think that probably is the most reasonable answer, right? Yeah. Any comment? No, no, uh, sometimes uh, people get confused, whether, particularly in case of inferior MI. If you yes. have fascicular block, be careful about commenting about uh, inferior MI. Exactly, and, and the other part, what do I get confused still, when somebody has left bundle bank block. Yes. You can have that pattern, which which is very difficult to say whether it's in free MI or no. it's because of this left bundle bank block. Yeah. So th those are the situations that we are. So I think answer wise, I thought that probably the last one is the More most than. accurate, but the, I will also take number um, three. Number three. Uh, because I, I would yes. take these two, sir. Yes, I'll take both of those. But keep, please keep in mind, one question is, sometimes with left interfacial block before committing on inferior MI, please be careful whether there is a small R wave or not. And the same confusion happens when somebody has left, but the other one that can be confused at inferior MI is WPW syndrome. Yes, sir. In that case, the PR is the get, get, giveaway. All right, so we'll go to the next one. <laughs> so this is a patient on telemetry monitor, um, came with history of syncope, and, and this is what the patient did. Uh, is somebody keeping time? How much? I think most people have answered the question. Um, 18 people answered and the choice answer has been five people said sinus rhythm followed by sinus arrest. Never ever. And then majority said 12 said atrial fibrillation followed by atrial standstill and then John has skip it and the few said, uh, one said atrial fibrillation with Pause. Um, is motion on the line or? Motion. Are you here? Motion, Vishen? It is three. Three fibrillation. Sadiq, are you here? Sadiq, what is it? Sadiq, what is it? Sadiq, what is it? Might not be active. Okay. So, shall I talk or you want to talk? 
So, so this is atrial fibrillation with uh, atrial standstill. Then yeah. junction is kept it. Fantastic. So, with, so yeah, but but a few people say let's give. I always like to give benefit to the five person thought that this was sinus rhythm followed by an sinus arrest. Yes, it looks like if you look at where my pointer is, you can see the pointer that looks like a P wave followed by QRS. Maybe P wave, but look at overall, there is no pattern to it. If you look at the other lead, there is no definite P wave. So yes, sometimes the fib may look like P wave. It, it happens as the rate gets faster in some leads, but irregular RR interval, no definite P wave. And okay. then I'm going to bring number four. If it happened that it was the actual fibrillation with a pause, when I'm seeing all this fibrillatory wave and there's nothing there. So that means when this line was happening, not only in one lead, in both leads, that means in this point, there is no AFib at all. So that means the most diagnosis is atrial followed by atrial stance. That means the atrial fibrillation stopped and then yeah. it came back with a junctional escape beat with a ventricular and then junctional beat, I'm sure the sinus beat came back. And there that's a lot of times happening. Yeah. Sir, one question has been, uh, one, uh, Dr. Abu Nai Mahmud Hassan, he's asking, yeah. what's the difference between sinus arrest, sinus pause, and atrial standstill? Okay. So, sinus arrest will be that if I had sinus rhythm, and then, then I have a long pause, which is not multiple of the P2P interval. So if it happens that I find an interval, which is two times the sinus beat, I'll call it two to one SA block. If it is five times, I'll call it five to one SA block. But if it doesn't match with the pore with this, then it will be sinus arrest. But here I am not starting with sinus at all. I'm just starting with a natural fibrillation. So I cannot apply that in that case, the most likely term to use will be atrial. That means atrium is not contracting at all. Then I have a junction. I, I think Thanks. for the audience, it's important that the atrial stand is still actually the term is coined, particularly in these cases of atrial fibrillation. When you, there is a chaotic rhythm and then there is nothing, no electrical activity. <clears throat> yes. All right. Sir, the question now. Do you have to put a pacemaker in this patient? What are the okay. criteria when you have atrial fibrillation with the uh, yeah. atrial stent still? So this patient came with history of syncope. So we have to put it. it, it this, then now it's very clear. On the telemetry monitor, he, she does this. And what will happen eventually, this kind of patient, they go back and forth between that. When they convert to sinus rhythm, they'll be fine. And then they will go back into AFib again. And every time they will convert, they'll have a pause. And that's when the pacemaker will be needed. And then I will probably put a pacemaker and then start antiarrhythmic treatment to maintain sinus rhythm. But if a patient has sir, uh, atrial fibrillation and uh, atrial stand still, but no history of syncope, what will you do? Oh, so it depends what time and what was the patient doing and what are the symptom. A lot of times I will do halter monitors and we will find six, seven, eight second pause at night in patients and no symptom at all. We will not put a pacemaker in. Yes, yes. Um, yes, yes. I, I, unless we have daytime pause, but even on daytime pause, you have to ask the patient where they're sleeping during daytime because some people sleep at night uh, at around three, four o'clock and obesity. So it's very symptom related. Um, thank you. So this is a patient that 86 year old male who presented with syncope, history of ischemic cardiomyopathy, LV ejection fraction 25 to 30%, history of poll later on, don't put the poll yet. This is not, just take the poll away. Did he put poll out top? Oh, no, no, the poll is not there, fine. Um, so hypertension paroxysm at fibrillation. this is the first ECG of the patient. And this is, uh, uh, all the ECG you will see, there will be date and time. So uh, if you look at, uh, this was on uh, 20, 28 July at 5.26 PM. 
when the patient came to the hospital. <laughs> I'm glad that we have majority of the people who are present today are answering the questions, which is good. Please do answer and we'll discuss and we'll give credit to everybody. 14 person. Motion nine. Motion to be kya chho bhai. Take a seat. bhai. Number two, take to address current J. Tinjon will say ventricular tachycardia. Yes. So, half is the Kunta Arami Chilam, half is Masil, half is Chup Chapas. I have to be careful now. So, the, the whole point what Hafiz is trying to point out is it tachycardia? Tachycardia is a rate over 100. It is not. So whatever it is, you take that part away. So it is not, it can be any tachycardia. It, it, is, no, it is not a tachycardia at all. So that number two is out of question. And I'm glad that nobody called it sinus rhythm. So the, now we are left with two choices, junction rhythm with right bundle bunch block and accelerated idioventricular rhythm. And I will give credit to both persons. What goes against idioventricular rhythm is the V1 morphology. That's the only one. First R is bigger than the second R. If I did not know the ECG subsequently, I will take both answers as correct answer. But please remember when you have initial are bigger than the second R, it is most likely right bundle type. But then, even though I am saying that, it is not fulfilling the criteria in lead one or lead V6. So I will take both answers as correct answer. Now, this same patient, after a um, little bit later, this is the ECG at 8.20 PM after three hours. Now, what will you call this one? And then after looking at this, when I look back at the other one, then it will make more sense of what it is. Hello, edition, please. Repo pause. Repo pulls down. Apple phone. A boy date with a fanboy. Sign me up. Literally, it's blind. He has blind. Hold on. All right. I'm going to get you a problem. I'm going to get you a problem. This scene recreated from Blade Runner 2049, which falls walking through a rainy city. There's a massive corporation ball with a nice little advertisement. It's a car here at the background there. Thanks. Okay. Sir, good. Good. So at least Hafiz's question took away one thing, ventricular tachycardia. Nobody said it's ventricular tachycardia. So question is, is it junctional rhythm or accelerated idioventricular rhythm? Now, if you look at this in the rhythm strip, uh, rhythm strip V1, there is a P wave. There is something which looks like P wave. I always say that but it is present before each QRS complex. And it is initial positive followed by negative. 
So that means it's a sinusoidal wave. So it's sinus rhythm. And there is first degree envelope I, I did not mention. Um, again, left anterior fascicular block. That is now probably a small RI added the inferior MI. Uh, it's again debatable, but definitely loss of R wave in the anterolateral leads. So that is probably an old uh, anterolateral micro infraction. So I'm going to put both at the same time. Now look at this. You see, this is when it was junctional rhythm, V1, exactly same, and V6, similar. And V lead one is similar. So, but this is CG, the first one. I mean, it, it's tough to, um, if somebody says accelerated ventricular rhythm, I'll take it. If it says junctional rhythm with left bundle, right bundle with left interphysical block. Um, somebody raised hand, Dr. Khan. Hey, Muntasir Abit Khan. Ribu, Muntasir ke to ye kurte do. Ah, uh, sir. So um, please, uh, even though I did not mention about the first degree in the urine science, this patient also has first degree AV block. Yes. So by definition, it's triphysical block. That actually gives clue why the patient is having multiple episodes of synco. Is Dr. Montazir Khan coming? Ibu. Yes, sir, unake permit kora hoche, but uni ukanteke an new unmute hochena. Okay. So take a chatalamra. Same patient. The ECG before was 28 July, and this is 29 July now. Next day. I have put the heart rate, heart rate is 53. Yeah, Ravik bhai, uh, technically, mm -hmm. left mm -hmm. anterior hemi block are old inferior. It is, yes. It is difficult. I mean, it's, it, that's a problem because inferior MI can cause left axis deviation. We talked right. about that. Right. We were absent in that, but the, this this can be a big problem. Amader uh, board examination Money yes, yes, you were right. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so we have um, 10 answers. And majority said junction rhythm, left bundle, old anterolateral and inferior micro infarction. Then junction rhythm, left bundle, right block, some say it's sinus rhythm. So sinus rhythm, to be sinus rhythm, there should be a P wave. But there is no P wave before any of these QRS complexes. And I struggled with this. I have may make comment whether I should call it a left bundle branch block or non-specific interventricular conduction lead because lead one fulfills the criteria of left bundle. But look at these leads. They don't as much, right? right. Uh, that, but it is possible that if we go a little bit, like sometimes if you go to V7, V8, you will see that pattern. So whatever it is, it, there is left-sided block and there is ROA progression is lost. So it's anterolateral and then um, probably, probably inferior MI, but as Hafiz said, but the whole point is this patient presented with the junctional rhythm with the right bundle, left anterior or triphysical block, next day develop this block and junctional. So question is, what, and then this is the older ECG. 
a year ago. And similar to the last TCG, except that it, this is sinus rhythm with left bundle, or I'm, I'm not going to fall on this one. Question is, what is the most likely etiology of symptoms? Please remember, this patient came with 86 ischemic cardiomyopathy, ejection fraction 25 to 30%, and presents with syncope. And these are all possibilities. So what we are talking about, you can answer anything you want to, the, whatever you think reasonable. This patient could have had any of those, but I want to see what um, everybody's thinking process is in this uh, diagnosis. Yes. Even Friday afternoon, nobody is around. Still, you need to put a temporary wire. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yeah, that, well, now we're going to come yes. to that. So uh, <laughs> let's, uh, you'll make that comment here. Because Friday... <laughs> the, the, to do it the, the, yeah. Uh, you, uh, whether you do it Friday or Saturday, it is better to do it Friday. So yes. what is what will be the diagnosis? Let's give the poll. The important thing we have to consider is the age, the ejection fraction, the presentation, and the ECG findings. Review <clears throat> poll though. Yes. So um, more people answered. Majority said intermittent complete heart block. Yes. This patient presented with one episode of syncope. And um, I'm sure all the panelists will agree that this most likely causes intermittent complete heart block, right? Right, sir. Yeah. Yes. Right. But we also need to keep in mind if this patient had multiple syncope, I will more or less rule out VT. But VT is also a possibility. Six sinus syndrome is a possibility because the patient goes from um, sinus to junctional. Vesovagal is unlikely. I mean, it's, it's an option. But I think in this setting, because the problem is, if I consider vesovagal in a patient who is a high risk patient, then I am just ignoring the patient in a way. Yeah. So I think we all agree as a group that intermittent complete heart block with the primary diagnosis, six sinus syndrome and ventricular tachycardia are the considerations. Question is, what to do with this patient? Now, if I want to prove VT or no VT, I can do electrophysiology study. Problem is if his electrophysiology study is positive, it supports the diagnosis. Negative does not totally rule out VT, especially in the presence of ischemic cardiomyopathy. Now, these are the choices that I am giving that what we are going to do to this patient. Yes. Into uh, EF Devana, echo, echo information available now. Oh, this is the EF 25 to 30%. Oh, okay. I mean, primary yeah, ischemic yeah, cardiomyopathy. Patient carries the diagnosis of ischemic cardiomyopathy. Okay. Good choices, Rubik Bhai. Yeah. <coughs> patient. Uh, Patient dementia, nai. no, no dementia. No, this no, no, no cancer, nai. no, no, no cancer, no dementia. They're fairly fit. I mean, by American, by any standard, fit 86 year old male. Audience, for the audience, I'm saying that the question Hafiz Bhai is asking because these are the points we have to consider for deciding about the treatment. So, I'll be talking about that. Guidelines are very specific about these things. Okay, um, the poll, please. 
আমরা বাংলাদেশের এখানেও যে ফিউটিলিটি অফ কেয়ার ইফ ইউ এ পেশেন্ট ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ওয়েন ইউ প্রোভাইডিং হাইলি এক্সপেন্সিভ ডিভাইস থেরাপি So, um, uh, absolutely. So I think the management wise, we first have to ask what half is asked the questions. One, is the patient demented? What is the overall condition of the patient? Is there any need for fit? If those are not present, which was not present in this patient, I think three last choices are the choices that we have to accept. But depending on what the patient want, if we accept the diagnosis of intermittent complete heart block, and if the patient wants everything to be done, and if the patient has symptom of heart failure, then biventricular defibrillator is the best choice for this patient. Second will be, we can go for a single chamber defibrillator implantation. Third will be philosophical question. If I personally cross 85 years of age, if I ever do that, then I'll probably want just a pacemaker. I can say, look, don't do anything to me, pacemaker, then I may want a choice of whether it's a biventricular pacemaker or a single or dual chamber, that will be a different thing. But so these, they, that's how the decision should be made. For biventricular defibrillator implantation, you must give choice to the patient. If somebody is young, I always say, look, if you take a defibrillator, if you don't take a defibrillator, that's a stupid choice. If somebody has crossed the age of probably 75 in Bangladesh, and 80, over 80 in the United States, I always give them choice. Look, this is my recommendation. I will accept whatever you choose. Um, Wadud or um, Hafiz or Shafiq, any comment? Look, I am going to say that I have said to our junior doctors that they see that patient had a pacemaker and they make arrogant comment. Oh, the cardiologist did not know. But you need to talk to the cardiologist before you criticize somebody that it is a discussion between the physician and the patient that the cardiologist may be aware as Ravik Bhai pointed out. Ideally, the best choice is by VICD, but there may, it's not that ignorance. Sometimes the situation and the patient preferences and for Bangladesh is even more important for immediate threat is from the bradycardia complete heart block. So you can give a pacemaker and then give supportive care. It's not the ideal, but it will salvage the situation for now. Uh, can, so it is important to, to overall address before pointing out somebody is ignorant or make arrogant comment. We need to be very humble and see the overall situation. Right. Shafiq, or other than any comment? So really, uh, I'm agreed. Uh, actually, patient need to be salvaged first. But the, considering the patient's pocket, it is wise to put a pacemaker first, even in the single chamber. Uh, that is important for the salvage of the patient because if we think it is intermittent complete heart block. So that is why. But definitely by ventricular I said is the best uh, choice for the patient if patient can come. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So, I mean, what we are all saying, please remember this, that look at the clinical synergy of the patient. Symptom relief, please remember two things. One, even with ICD, people will die. And even without ICD, 70% of patients will survive more than three years. Yes, sir. Please keep that in mind. So you have to be, this is a very, very philosophical decision about giving a defibrillator. Like personally, I would rather die of VF than die of terminal heart failure because I will not know. I'll, I'll know it for a few seconds. And that's my personal view. And I discuss that clearly with my patients. How do you want to die? Right. Um, yeah, and it's important. Thank you. So the next will patient- Synchronization will be helpful and the ICD will prevent arrhythmic death. But yes. from the patient perspective, death is death, is it ischemic cardiomyopathy. Overall, survival will be longer with the defibrillator and uh, by VICD. But 
the question is how the patient wants it in terms of patient's choices and financial uh, situation. You know, personally, I feel if you if I if I am seventy plus year old, you give me a choice between a biventricular defibrillator and biventricular pacemaker. I will probably choose biventricular pacemaker. That significantly improves quality of life. Right. And so and 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 with significant risk reduction. फिलोसफिकल डिसकाशन एंड शुड बी कम्पेशनेट फिलोसफिकल डिसकाशन उन्ट and it is very very important that you sit we That's sit great. down with the patient and treat them as if they are our family member which they are actually na it has ki ghoshona dibo next date e apnake dekhabo okay aajke ghoshona so this is this is a female 41 year old female had three days of nausea and vomiting and presents with dizziness and this is the first ecg it's a little ugly looking ecg but please look in any, every ugly picture there is somewhere there is something good so please start with that good part and then go back forward and you you will understand this ecg sir look it a background te ki chilo a uh, 41 year old female three days of nausea and vomiting and episodic dizziness ah i think this would is answering very nice that's a clue yes okay so sir, uh, majority said a sign of your program is successful sir <laughs> 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 because this is with pvc by gemini 530 and prolong qt the way you know this this ecg looks ugly but start with the middle part look you can see the sinus and it is not tachycardia it's more than three boxes p q r s p q r s p q r s and then if i go back i can see the pvc by gemini and when it is sinus the qt is more than half of the rr interval that's the giveaway yes. It's a long QT. So the question is, so this patient, this is at what time? Um, its time is written in the bottom, and later on, does this? Please look at this ECG, and then we'll give the um, choices. So any multiple choice question. the picture should tell you what the answer should be then you look for the answer in that we sometimes look at questions and then try to find the answer the picture or the context of the question should tell you what you are looking for so these are my choices now if you could give me the give us the poll give a poll please So this is great, right? Sir, so yes, it, uh, <laughs> people are actually <laughs> learning very well. Yes. So Tarsad, why Tarsad? All How many people answer design. actually? How many people answer? Thirteen uh, people. Thirteen out of thirteen answer correct. Oh, very and last proud. time it is, last time seventeen people answered. But first of all, white QRS tachycardia, but. 
it's this one QRS is looking down and this one is looking up, it stops. And it's preceded by long QT and long short sequence. So this is clearly torsad, no question about it. Question is, what are you going to do with this patient? Okay, so majority say number three, four persons said start amiodarone and check electrolytes. Any comment from Badud, uh, Hafiz or um, Dr. Shafiq? What do you so, are- Unmute you. yourself. You, you have mentioned in the background, the patient has now shown vomiting for three days. So there must be electrolyte disturbance related to the uh, prolonged interference. So first choice is we should look at the electrolytes and the treatment wise for torsa interferous magnesium is the choice. Yeah. So the reason amiodarone is we have a reflex for amiodarone. Anytime we uh -huh. see white QRS, we want to start amiodarone. Please remember, Amiodarone prolongs QT. And if somebody has long QT from electrolyte disturbance, it will make it worse. Yes, yes, yes. So, and if this patient had background bradycardia, I would have tried to increase it. But this patient doesn't have background bradycardia. This patient actually has tach close to sinus tachycardia. So let's check, give magnesium. This patient's potassium was two when this happened. And so this is next sir, day. Sir, can I make a comment? Yes. In Dhaka Medical College, we sometimes get patients from ICD Derby who have had uh, diarrhea and then later develop the prolonged QT and torsa. Yes. And they send the yeah. patient to us. Yeah. We have yeah. had multiple patients in the last few years. Yes. So even in America, look at this. This patient came yesterday at 3 p.m. and 4 a.m. potassium is still 2.1. They give potassium, but they don't do that aggressive potassium replacement. So you have to be aggressive about replacing potassium in this patient. And by that time, still the EKG is, uh, QT is prolonged and there's probably a TU complex, but P wave. And then subsequently when the potassium gets normal, they look at this uh, QT intervals are uh, still long, it will, because there is a lag between intracellular potassium level and exercise. There is potassium is 4.3. It, it is getting better. And then uh, by 1st of October, you see, potassium is 4.2. The QT has totally normalized. So please remember, so, even when- Magnesium on this side too. Magnesium, magnesium actually, yeah, they get magnesium, but the problem thing was that magnesium level was normal, 2.3. Yeah. So, but we start the magnesium even without checking it. That yeah. is the standard protocol. And we all do that, right? Yes. So, uh, and then you can see that there is evidence of left atrial enlargement. So those are two cases. Uh, what time is it now? So uh, we, have, we got 10 minutes more at least. Okay. We'll do some random ECGs now, um, two cases. And um, so let's look at this one. We were happy on a linear and Kintami bullies or it was that patient. Did you go amiodron? That is a clear fail to me. It's, it's a non, not compromising. It is so bad to give amio. Yes, uh, absolutely. Because in the setting of long QT and especially torsad, uh, it, it, it can be disastrous actually. Yeah.
Next, maybe next time, sometime, I mean, I'll show some cases when Rovigba is here about few cases of polymorphic BT. Great, that'll be good. So um, I think we have a good, uh, nobody said actual fibrillation, that's good news. Um, and then we have a fair distribution between all three other choices. So to call sinus, we need a P wave, sinus P wave, which will be upright in lead one AVL, two, three AVF, biphasic in lead V1. We don't have that. Question then, is it junctional rhythm or ectopic actual rhythm? When I quickly looked at it, I thought maybe it's a junctional rhythm, but there is something before the QRS complex. Here there is an artifact, but here it is. And I have magnified that. I have magnified this too. You see, you can see the P wave, but that P wave is negative in lead two. So it's an ectopic atrial bradycardia. We, um, I don't remember the context of this patient. I'm sure most of these patients are from one of my hospitals. This is 88 years, most probably presented with syncope. And if there is history of syncope with ectopic atrial bradycardia, this is a very much consistent with 6 and syndrome. So please keep an eye on it. So I'll take a junctional or ectopic atrial, but the diagnosis is actually ectopic atrial bradycardia. I'm, I'm actually impressed Rovik, by the answer pattern of the Kina is way better than before. Of yes, course, no, yes, no, no, yes. this is, I, I'm very impressed, I'm really, very happy. Really happy. Yes. yes. Again, is it that the T wave gulag is the golden to learn? No, my. <laughs> I, I just wanted to give it a little. Give me, give me one second. Um, actually, this the same patient. This is the ECG <laughs> of the same patient. The poll, please. Libhu poll, though. You see, the problem in this kind of ECG, you have to decide where you want to start. Are you going to start before the pause or after the pause? That's a decision that I always grapple with. And, and, and that's how you decide on the diagnosis um, of this patient. I don't think the poll is coming up yet. Ripu posed it too. Ripu, are you here with us? Ask it. Network is a get to crap. We can see the name. You hold that network of Portuguese. Yeah, you hold all. Yeah, you hold all. Okay, the poll is here. Okay. Um, 21 people answered. Um, shall I discuss this? Yes. Okay. So the choice is uh, three people answered sinus rhythm with atrial premature beat. So if I consider that, um, then if I start from here, this is the initial beat followed by a premature beat, but there is no nothing before that. So this is not a sinus bit with a premature bit. 
Let's go to lead V1, these two bits. P wave by phasic in lead V1 by phasic. So basically, that is sinus rhythm and degree of sinus arrhythmia. So these are sinus bits. And this is a sinus bit followed by bradycardia, the junctional escape bit. So sinus bradycardia, the junctional escape bit, right? But this is not a junctional rhythm. To be junctional rhythm, all of them have to be junctional. It is not. It is not an ectopic actual rhythm because when we have P wave, they are fulfilling the requirement of sinus beat. By only, even though I have only V1 and beat V1 to go with, because in lead one, two, by that time, there, there is actually one. Lead one, there is a positive. Lead two is positive. And lead AVL is positive. So whenever there is a sinus P wave, it confirms to. So it is sinus bradycardia with junction escape beat. And this patient, you know, he had ectopic actual bradycardia. Now this, this is clearly consistent with sinus syndrome. And uh, this is the patient ECG year before air cut sinus rhythm. Um, I don't want to go over this. I think we should stop here, right? We had enough for today. Yes, sir. <laughs> but we really enjoyed it. Thank you. I hope the audience also enjoyed the show. There are a couple of people who um, raised hand. Do anybody want to talk or make any comment? So we find out if, if there's anybody who wants to. Sir, I just want to go to the previous ECG, sir. Okay. This one? Uh, no, sir. Previous one. Uh, this, sir. this is the discussion point. Next one, sir. Just you have discussed the ECG. Yeah, right, yeah, here, sir. right here, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you look into the V1, first bit, second bit, third bit is the sinus. Yes. Uh, next bit is the uh, ectopic. Uh, escape uh, bit. That is yes. escape bit, sir. Sinus. And this bit, next bit, is it sinus yes. or ectopic? It is It is sinus because if it, it's a, you are right. I mean, Dr. Shafiq has a very sharp eye because yeah, but it is a positive, negative. positive negative. Yeah. So big difference. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're right. So I think, no, I, I should have mentioned this. So what happened? There's a P wave, but this beat is a junctional beat. Yeah. Right, sir. So this is it's too a, close to call yeah. it a sinus. This so is junctional. Yes. Yeah, so the sinus conducted, sinus, before it could conduct, there is a junctional escape beat. Right, sir. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Perfect. This patient has significant conduction system disease. Um, that is difficult to say, Hafiz, because when there is a P wave, it conducts. But this one is it because of the, oh, yes, because of the, you, you, you have said it, because of the, the right bundle left axis. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. And there's no question about it. Right yeah. bundle bunch block, left anterior fascicular block, both are there. Yeah. But, yeah. but the AV conduction, we don't know. Thank you. Any, anybody, any comment? Otherwise, um, please. Uh, uh, what do sir, I, I have an announcement. In the next class, in addition to our usual ECD presentation, uh, Dr. Mukhtar Sen Sadibhai will present a little bit about history of cardiology and the great discoveries that have been made over the centuries. Uh, that will be around 15 to 20 minutes presentation. I hope uh, we'll be enjoying that too. So are you going to do that before or after? Uh, I think uh, we'll start with that, sir. And then we'll yes, go into exactly. it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That'll be great, thank you. It will uh, add a, a little bit of spice into our usual presentation. Rofik, sir, I have a question, yeah. sir. Yeah. Sir, in the previous ECG, the, uh, you mentioned that the sinus beat that is not being conducted because yes. the junction bit, uh, the simultaneous junction will be appear. So, sir, yes. what is the uh, physiological PR interval that that uh, lowest possible PR interval that countable as oh. sinus conduction? No, no, no. This bit that Dr. Shafiq mentioned, yes, this sir. could be a normal PR interval, but in this patient. Because look at the PR interval. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, you can, you can, you can get normal PR interval. 
yeah, short PR, but you know, by definition is uh, 120 milliseconds will be around normal. So this is not, if, if I had this, if I have just this QRS complex, you gave me this, there is no way for me to tell that this is a, a sinus bit with a junctional escape. Yes, it is, we are talking about it just in this context because all the PR intervals are totally different and this probably simultaneously happening sinus bit with a um, um, junctional escape bit. So, so probably if the PR interval is less than 110, then we should not say it is a conducted uh, sinus bit. No, 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 no. That is not is true. That, is, that, is, that the, is, that, uh, is that a possibility? Okay, so the question is, the suggestion is if the PR interval is less than 110 milliseconds, we should not call it a conducted bit. That is not true. We will define it as a short PR interval, but we cannot make any more comment. And if it is consistently short PR, that means the driver is the P wave. If the short PR is because they are independent, then there will be a variation in the PR interval if the PR is constant. Now, of course, if there is a short PR and you find there is a negative P wave in two, three AVF, then of course it's a retrograde P wave. But so, junctional escape with junctional bit with retrograde, but, uh, but there is a constant relationship between the two. So let me clarify, Rebek. can I clarify one thing? Yes. So the differential of short PR interval <coughs> is either pre-excitation or yes. long Ganong-Levin or yes. the uh, ectopic <clears throat> atrial rhythm or junctional. Yes. In this context, oh. most likely junctional is the cause for this because it also need the situation. Here, by looking at one, one bit, we cannot call that this is pre-excitation because it has to be in the context of the overall. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> but also some people, you will find young people with short PR intervals. And the mechanism they're talking about, some people have small AV node, some people have atrionodal or atriohysian uh, bypass, uh, bypass tract without obvious pre-excitation pattern. And yeah. these are all uh, electrophysiological diagnoses uh, have to be made. Thank you. Thank you and sir. young people can have high vagal tone with sinus and alternative uh, junctional rhythm. Yep, uh, absolutely. So it all comes down to the basic question, uh, the scenario, whether the patient is symptomatic or not, the age yeah. and the uh, other uh, features, it is ECG features. Here you are saying that the patient have extensive conduction de de defect because the patient have bundle bunch block, left ventricular block, and also some degree of uh, bradycardia, etc. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, everybody. We really mm -hmm. enjoyed today's session. Arun, are you here? Long time no see. Arun? Arun sir was here, sir. Uh, Arun sir is here, but uh, as he mentioned, there are some problems in internet in Nepal sometimes. So, Like, is, like uh, us. <laughs> yes, I would have have uh, I would have liked to have some hear some comments from him. Ajom, are you here? Sir, 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 sir. Ajom, sir. Hey, bolo, bhai. your comments, please. Sir, your comments, please. <coughs> sir, our comments, sir, which is program to sir content. Which is paper bolta hai, sir? I mean, you have anything. কনেকশন <laughs> 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 ইন্টারনেট খুবই খারাপ 
Sadi or Hafiz looks at it and sees. So that's the whole point that medicine, we are never complete or perfect. We sh in share information with each other and learn from each other. And we keep doing it all, all along our life. Rubik sir, I have a, uh, some clarification. The, the long and living syndrome, short period, now it is called enhanced amenoral conduction in young people. So yes. is it true? Yes. It was there? Yes, because yes. That, that was a diagnosis, because that's why I think that short PR doesn't always mean a pathological condition. Yes, yes. yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks, everybody. And Assalamu Rafiq, sir. sir, as ever, thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, we really enjoyed, after a long gap, we, we are actually looking for this program again and again. And the audience, Thanks to everyone who has joined us. And in the next program, Sadifai will be waiting for your presentation. See you. Okay. Bye. Ribhu and your team. Yes, Thank you, Kamru. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good night, sir. Good night, sir.